Thank you so uh, much, Chris. <laughs> yeah, not a problem. I'll be putting some stuff in the chat. All right, we're all set. Alrighty. Thank you for that warm welcome and welcome everyone from SUNY. We are so excited to be here today and happy Friday to everyone. I hope it's um, a great weekend for you all and um, a great time to spend together. So I'm going to go ahead and share out my screen at this time. Alrighty. So if you are not able to see my screen um, throughout our session, then please let us know in the chat and my moderators can come off mute and let me know as well. And again, I want to say welcome. My name is Sarah and I will be introducing our moderators very soon. But I did want to remind us that today's training will be recorded, just like Chris said, that um, it will be available via email for you all. Now we are in a Teams meeting environment today, which means there are a few meeting controls that you can take advantage of. Now, if you're logged in using the desktop version of Teams, this taskbar meeting controls will be located at the utmost portion. And if you're using the web version of Teams, this taskbar will be located to the bottom most portion. And starting from left to right, we can locate our chat icon that we highly encourage you to utilize today. Uh, that will open up any resources that my moderators may provide, as well as any resources from your organization's end as well. Uh, feel free to engage today as you may have any questions for, or perhaps any comments for me. If I am going too fast or too slow, please let me know as we want to ensure today's session is valuable. We also have the reactions icon. As long as that's enabled, feel free to utilize that even at this time to test it out. Uh, we do encourage you to use that raise hand feature if you would like to come off mute and we will go ahead and enable your microphone. We also have the three dots that will allow you to follow along using those live captions, that wonderful accessibility feature if you, so, if you wish to today. And we also have a share screen icon. Uh, just know that if that is enabled, it will share out your screen instead of mine. So we do ask that you refrain from using that control. And finally, for whatever reason, if you needed to leave today, we ask that you use that leave button and come back and join us whenever you are ready. Now, the many faces behind our team today we have on Microsoft's end, myself, Sarah, your presenter, along with our lovely moderators. We have Rod, Stefan, Alberto, Alan, and Joe, and we are all Microsoft trainers located in the New York City hub location. And our moderators will also be using their demo tenants to collaborate with us during our demonstration. So a big shout out to all my colleagues uh, for all your support today. Now, today's agenda will consist of working inside our Teams meeting interface as we experience our life cycle, specifically what you could take advantage of even before the meeting begins. So that's pre-meeting stage. Then we'll dive into the during meeting stage and finally wrap up with the post-meeting stage where we could take advantage of plenty of resources to be in the know. Now we'll also learn to schedule a meeting in a variety of ways and also how we can join a meeting and learn to collaborate utilizing many of the functions built into Teams. Now we'll dive into how we can connect one-on-one -on -one and lead a team training or perhaps host an interactive webinar for up to a thousand attendees. You'll learn how to engage your audience while reviewing notes, even engage in live reactions and feel like you're in the room together. So this is all better demonstrated live. So let's head into the meat and potatoes of our session today. Just bear with me for a couple of seconds as I transition from our PowerPoint. Now over to our lovely Microsoft Teams interface. Now we'll start out like by quickly recapping the lay of the land here in Teams. So Teams, as you know, is broken up into three sections. First, we have our horizontal menu bar located at the topmost portion. And we'll see starting from the top right, I am using a demonstration account today by the name of Adele Vance, and she works for a fictional company called Contoso. Furthermore, I am working inside a virtual machine today. So if we happen to notice any hiccups or lagging along the way, we can go ahead and blame my virtual machine on those issues. Located next door, we have our three dot ellipses, always giving you more options, not just in Teams, but for any M365 application that you may come across. I like to personally think of these three dots as my hidden treasure within my treasure chest of Microsoft Teams. In the top center, we can locate our intelligent search bar. And in the top left, 
We have our left and right navigation arrows acting similarly to how they would in a web browser. Quick note, when you do hover over the left arrow, notice that I can quickly reference back to a page that I was engaging in prior. Now also note that I am using a, the desktop version of Teams. So if you're using the web version, some of the features may be slightly different, such as seeing the nine dot app launcher, also known as the waffle icon in place of these left and right navigation arrows. Our second section is our left hand navigation rail, and this includes all the helpful icons built into Teams. We'll spend the majority of our time together within our Teams calendar interface. Now, some of these icons will also open up a left panel organization alongside with it as well. And third and final section of Teams is our main content area, taking up the largest portion of our Teams interface. So now that we've quickly recapped the lay of the land, let's go ahead and see how Teams offers many ways to connect and collaborate. The two main differences are calls and meetings, the very title of our session today. So there are various call options in Teams, and you can think of calling as your quick in the moment conversation when perhaps chat is just not getting the job done. Now I have my one on one persistent chat here with Deborah, and I find it more valuable for me to just jump into an audio call with her and you can do so with a one on one chat signified by that single profile icon or perhaps a group chat like I like I have excuse me here with project beta signified by a multitude of icons next to the chat here. So we can navigate to the top right corner and here we can extend any chat within the chat screen to a call. Now we have options to either jump into an audio call or a video call. Now you'll see that my video camera is grayed out and that's because I don't have a camera connected to my virtual machine, but you should see that camera video camera enabled on your end. Now note when I do call using either method, Teams will call all of the members within my group chat at the same time. So all three members will be notified. Now we can also see this instant within our Teams and Channels area. So let's pivot to Teams and perhaps I'm inside my digital assets web channel within my Market project team. I'm going to see in the top right corner that same action item to jump into an ad hoc meeting or an impromptu meeting, but now with all the members of my channel. So we can find that by selecting, we'll have the option to meet now. Now, perhaps you're not ready to jump into an ad hoc meeting with your channel members. So that's when you could take advantage of scheduling a channel meeting, which we'll see shortly. So to engage in our meet now option, we'll see that our pre-meeting screen, or as I like to say, my backstage dressing room in Teams, prompts us to perhaps change up our title. So if this was for mock training purposes, then I can have that titled as such. And now we'll go ahead and just turn off my audio to eliminate feedback. And if I were to join now, we'll see that I am here all alone. And that's why Teams prompts me to copy out a meeting link or add participants. Now, without having to engage in either of those options, of course I can do so if I so wish. We see that there's a visual indicator for all of my channel members, including myself, that there is a meeting happening currently inside our digital assets web channel. So that shows that any of my teammates, maybe Alex or Alan or Deborah, if they wanted to join this digital assets web channel meeting, they can do so. So I can, of course, engage in my maybe add participants feature. And if I wanted to go ahead and add an individual or maybe make use of these suggestions, let's go ahead and request Diego to join. And if I wanted to maybe utilize this chat and say to my digital assets, web channel, please join me for my mock training. And we'll see Alex has caught the hint. He's already here with us. And again, I did not have to invite Alex. He saw this visual indicator to note that hmm, maybe this is something that he'd be interested in. And I've engaged in this chat like I normally would, and just like we can take advantage of today during our time together. But this chat lives within that post area of that channel. To, to show you what I mean, let's pivot to our post area. 
And now we'll see that same chat that I've initiated lives within the post area as a threaded conversation. Because as we know, as best practice within a channel area, we want to take advantage of that reply option when we do engage. So to showcase this within the post area, we can go ahead and say, thanks team for joining. Let's record, or let's go ahead and say, we'll record this session. All right, so now we can see that it's a threaded conversation. And for those individuals, let's say, are in a different meeting, they can always reference back to this threaded conversation to see maybe what they have missed. So perhaps I want to share out a relevant attachment, maybe from my OneDrive, I can do so and have this relevant product pricing PowerPoint to share it out as a link. And of course that will live within our threaded post here. So to go back to my mock training, I did indicate that I wanted to record. So we can select our ellipsis and record this just like we are doing in today's training. And that's for those individuals who may not have been able to join us. So they can always reference back to the recording of this mock channel training here. And we'll see that we get a banner notification, not just myself, but for any attendees that's part of this meeting to indicate that the recording has started. And I can go ahead and stop the recording. And I'm gonna go and leave my meeting here. You'll see that we have this item highlighted indicating that it's still going on with these members. And that recording will take a few minutes to upload, but we'll find that all the resource will live within that post area, as long as it's a channel meeting. So here it is for us. This recording will also be accessed within the files tab specific to that channel, and it will populate within this area. It's just gonna take a couple of minutes here. Alrighty, so it looks like my um, mock training is going on without me, with my colleagues, so awesome. Let's also look at our calendar area to see our meet now option. Similarly, in the top right corner, as you may have guessed, we have that meet now option to have a meeting by ourselves. Now, I like to have a meeting by myself when I am maybe getting ready for a session. So I like to record that meeting, play it back, make sure that I am ready to go for a training. So maybe I want to go ahead and say, this is going to be our practice session. And this is where I'm going to start my meeting, but maybe I want a link to share out. So I can go ahead and start this impromptu training by myself or meeting. And again, you'll see that it has prompted me to add individuals but I can go to my chat area and within my project beta team, maybe I want to say, please join and copy and paste that impromptu meeting that I have by myself. So a great shortcut, a way for you to not have to schedule a meeting because maybe you're just trying to prep last minute <laughs> and then that's where I can take advantage of my meet now option and get my link to share. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and leave this meeting and see that this meet now option, again, it may be if you want to also have a quick meeting with the group. If you haven't gotten a chance to schedule the meeting first and hope that everyone can join, this is where the meet now option can also come in handy. All right, so we've covered various meet now options, jumping into a quick ad hoc meeting, whether it's with a colleague, channel members, or even by yourself. But perhaps you want to schedule a meeting. So lucky for you, there are multiple meeting types. There are four exactly, depending on the purposes that suit you. So we'll navigate to the top right corner of our team's calendar and selecting this dropdown, let's preview each. We have our standard meeting that we'll see very soon, and this will be a basic standalone or recurring meeting. We also have the option to schedule a channel meeting, which we'll see very soon as well. And we'll have also the option to schedule a webinar. This is for an organized event where you have a main speaker and a lot of audience react interaction hosting up to 10,000 attendees. We also have our live event option, and this will 
be for large events like an all hands meeting or a public training within your organization, housing up to 10,000 attendees. So just to give you a preview of each, we'll go ahead and select webinar. And this is where we'll see that very familiar meeting details that we'll see soon for a standard meeting. But the only difference being that we'll create a registration form for our attendees. So this webinar details window is for the event group, the main speaker, any producers, any co-presenters, optional presenters. And if I were to engage in my live event, which we won't look into much today, but there is that option for you. And it looks quite different as you're setting up a live event for your organization. So let's go into the details of creating a standard meeting. Now there are many ways to do this. We did see that option to select the drop down and choose schedule a meeting, but I like to select my plus new meeting option here, or I can double click in the space of my choosing. And now we're greeted by a new meeting details for a standard meeting in Teams. So to fill out the content, I can say that this is going to be my bi weekly sync. And I can have my required attendees here. And let's go ahead and add my colleagues by simply typing in the first few letters of their name. Deborah, we also have Diego, Nestor, and let's make an optional attendee to showcase that today. People that may not be able to make it, but it's great for them to be in the know. A use case scenario for me every day are my managers. They're not able to make it to all the meetings, but it's great for them to pop in or just have it on their calendar for visibility purposes. So I'm going to have Christy here as my optional attendee. Now I'm going to have this actually be my weekly sync and we can have our date and time. If I wanted to change this manually, I can do so. So maybe I want this to start at 11.25 and have it, let's go and do that again. I can have it end by 12 p.m. And by default, it will show the 30 minute duration, but you can go ahead and manually change that or even have it all day. We have the arrows going in a circular motion, signifying that this can be changed from a standalone meeting to a recurring meeting. So let's explore those options as I've indicated that this is a weekly sync. So I can have it occur weekly, but maybe the purposes of your environment are daily or maybe monthly and even customize it. So we'll select weekly and it's going to happen every Friday. And without me putting an end date, it will occur indefinitely. So perhaps I want this to end by the last Friday of December. Now we talked about creating a channel meeting and that's done by simply choosing to select this item and it will open up all of your teams. Now, if I wanted to create it within my give event, you're just going to simply select the channel. So maybe I want to create an announcements channel meeting within my give event. Now that's not going to reflect the purposes of today's demonstration, but I did want to just showcase that there. We also have a location. If you do have a location tied in, let's say if I wanted to choose a building and then choose a specific room here. And now we can type out our details. So I can say team. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and send it away, but I did want to note that right now, what we're seeing before we send out this invite is the details tab as well as the scheduling assistant. Notice we don't have alternative tabs that we will soon have at our disposal. And we'll note that within our details area, we don't have the Teams meeting link just yet. So that's going to be shown when we send it out. So now that I've sent it out, when I go ahead and edit it, either the occurrence today or the series, because this is a recurring event, we can go ahead and select edit series. And now after I've sent out the invite, we'll have access to more, more tabs here, starting from chat. So we'll go ahead and engage in these items very soon, but I did want to just showcase an alternative way that you can schedule a Teams meeting. And this can be done through your chat environment. So this shortcut 
is something that I love to use, especially if I'm in a group chat with multiple members. I'm going to navigate to the bottom and we're greeted by a multitude of extension options to allow us to extend our conversation here. So we'll find this little calendar with the plus sign icon and that's your scheduling shortcut icon. And note that this time, not only does it bring up our new meeting details pane, but we also have our individuals that were part of that group chat populate automatically within the required attendees line. Of course, I can add additional members if I wanted to and rename my title, but that's just a shortcut for you to have access to creating a Teams meeting. Really useful if you are engaging in a Teams group chat already, or maybe you just have a lot of members and it, you want that shortcut available to you. Now we can also create a Teams meeting via Outlook. So let's explore that as we pivot to our Outlook interface. And along the bottom left, you'll be greeted by your modules. Now by default, you'll be greeted by your inbox, but you're gonna pivot to that calendar icon. Depending on your Outlook's version, perhaps these modules will be located at the top left corner, but for my version, I do have it located in the bottom left corner. So being inside my calendar module, I'll look within my home tab, specifically our ribbon, and we can find the option for a new Teams meeting add-in. And selecting this will prompt me to create a new Teams meeting, just like we saw within our Teams interface. So I'm gonna maximize this view here, and we're gonna go ahead and just type in our demo Teams meeting here via Outlook. And just like I did, just typing in the first few letters of their name, I'm gonna invite Christy and Alex here. And we have optional attendees, our start and end date, and I'm gonna have this occur on Monday because there's quite a few events on my calendar for today. We have the all day option. We also have time zones, really useful if you are talking to people in a different region or perhaps an international client. We also have the recurring option if you so wish to have this set up as a recurring meeting, but we'll see that by default, our location is inside a Microsoft Teams meeting. Now you might be wondering, what is the difference between creating a Teams meeting via Outlook versus inside your Teams area? Well, there are a couple. First, notice you have your Teams meeting link prior to sending out that invite. So I have not sent this invite out yet to Alex and Christy, yet I have this invitation link. So maybe I want to copy and paste this out within a Teams chat. And I also see a difference being within my meeting tab, within my ribbon, I have my meeting options available to me. Again, I have not sent out this invite, yet I have options to configure before I send out the invite. So as the organizer, I like to really configure this environment to suit whatever our needs are. In this case, to see who can bypass the lobby, by default, it's people in my organization guests. But maybe I want just people in my organization to bypass the lobby. Other items such as maybe choosing co-organizers, which is my favorite. I get to rely on my attendees to take part in these meeting options just so that the responsibility just isn't solely on myself. So I'm going to rely on Alex. He's a reliable colleague that will have access to these meeting options during my absence. Or maybe I'm not able to make it to the meeting on time, then I can rely on Alex. Who can present? Similarly, by default, it's to everyone, but maybe I want to specify people. So here, I will go ahead and choose Christy. We can also allow our microphone and camera. Maybe I want to disable it. And we'll see we have other options here as well. One that I do like to shout out is the allowing the meet, meeting chat feature. By default, it's enabled, but maybe I only want it enabled while we're in the meeting. So these meeting options look perfect, so I'm gonna save it. And again, I'm able to do those configurations before I sent it out. Now, before I do send it out, I do like to also look within my options and see that I can have this reminder which is another differentiating factor as Teams will not show you a reminder that there's a meeting pending or upcoming, excuse me. Whereas in Outlook, you do have that meeting, meeting reminder. So I'm gonna go ahead and now see also within my response options, I don't like to request responses 
because it can get a little bit too much to manage, but perhaps you want that response, then you can have that toggled on. But we're ready to go to send this out. And now we see that it populates within my Teams, or excuse me, my Outlook calendar here. All right, so as you know, our Outlook calendar is synchronized with their Teams calendar. So when I shift over to our Teams interface, specifically our calendar, we'll see that that demo meeting will populate here. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and see that now that we've seen all the different options when it comes to creating a Teams meeting or scheduling a Teams meeting, let's take a quick tour of our Teams calendar here. So we see that we have our view options in the top right corner. We were inside our work week view, but this is by default, but perhaps you want to pivot to that seven day work week view or maybe even zoom in on Today, it looks like I have four meetings happening simultaneously. So really great um, perspective if you did want to hone in on a specific day. I'm going to toggle back to my work week view and we can also find that if I wanted to take advantage of my pre meeting options, I'm going to just simply type uh, double select. And now I briefly mentioned all of these tab items here. So we're gonna take a look here. Uh, the first item being our chat and our chat area is extremely useful if you want to indicate to your colleagues, maybe an attachment that you want to send out as we know that we can send an attachment in Outlook. Here is your option here in Teams. If I want to send out an attachment that's relevant to this meeting, it's going to be this document. And I'm going to say a hey, team, Please take a look. And I'm going to send that out. And I'm also going to say. All right, so I'm going to let my colleagues know that I'm running a few minutes late to just go ahead and start without me. Now you also have access to those familiar extensions that you would in a normal chat. Now we're going to pivot over to taking advantage of additional tabs like our files tab. Now this is extremely useful because you don't have to rely on scrolling through your entire chat history as long as this does grow, which it will. So you can pivot to your files tab to locate those fat files that were exchanged between you and your colleagues. Now we also find our meeting notes. And these meeting notes will find that again, as the organizer, you don't have to initiate the meeting, but you do get that notification that the meeting has started. So I can join within this area, but I do want to take advantage of additional pre meeting options, such as maybe taking notes. Now I'm going to go ahead and find that within my meeting notes, I'd love to use a space for meeting minutes and specify the specific day. And here I'm going to rely on Christy to be our note taker. Now, as long as I'm writing within this section, my other colleagues will see a little lock symbol indicating that there's someone who's making edits. So one colleague or user will be working inside a section at a time. So if I wanted to add a new section, you'll find that if Christy or any of my colleagues were inside this section here that I just created, I will not be able to engage. So here, it looks like someone is editing the section. My colleagues are great. They've read my mind, so it looks like it's locked for me. So thank you for demonstrating that for us. I'm not able to engage here. Now, I did want to also note that as long as this is a recurring meeting, Teams will automatically create a new section for next time. So because this is a weekly sync for next Friday, we'll have a new section created and that's useful because I can always reference back to prior notes for a specific meeting, or also even maybe get prepared for the following meeting within our recurring series. Another item that's advantageous during our pre-meeting stage is creating a new whiteboard, or maybe I want to take advantage of these whiteboards that have happened in the past. But I'm gonna create a whiteboard that's relevant to our meeting today by utilizing along my left panel, a multitude of templates. Now for our Weekly sync today, we are making some updates. 
So I want to go ahead and take advantage of this brainstorming template here. Maybe it's going to be for topics and it will populate for me by simply selecting with my cursor and I can resize. Now, my whiteboard is extremely helpful as it's an infinite canvas for me to work on. In the bottom right, I can always zoom out, zoom in, and take advantage of typing in side the this template by simply double selecting. Now double selecting will give you more options as well to further format and personalize this area. And we see in the top right corner, if there are individuals with you, their profile icon will populate. So Alex is working hard there, filling that in for our meeting purposes. This intended step will be relevant during the post meeting stage. So let's pivot over to our final item, our breakout rooms. Now our breakout rooms can be configured before we start, but we don't always have to do so. We can do so while we're in the meeting as well, which is something that I want to showcase. So let's pivot over to our final icon, which is the plus symbol. Now this will allow me to add a tab specific to my weekly sync. So maybe I want to take advantage of polls. Then this is going to allow me to have this polls included within our meeting space and also create a tab specific to polls. I have two options being that I create a brand new poll or maybe make my life easier and take advantage of these suggestions. I love this icebreaker to start out my meeting this way. So maybe I want to switch up these choice, multiple choice options. Maybe I want to go ahead and just say, okay. And let's go ahead and save it as a draft as I'm not ready to launch it just yet. So saving it as a draft will allow me to access it during my meeting again, which we'll see very soon. So I'm taking advantage of my pre-meeting stage um, a lot. So I'm gonna go ahead and join my colleagues here. So within our during meeting stage, we are greeted by our backstage dressing room. And this is going to allow you to make sure everything looks and sounds the way you'd like it to. Along the left, you can see that we have our video options. Next door, you will find your virtual background options as long as that's enabled within your organization. We also find our cogwheel. As best practice, you want to explore your device settings to choose any external headsets or Bluetooth devices that will ensure that you are able to hear your attendees and vice versa. My favorite device settings is my noise suppression feature. We can find that I can suppress as little or as much of my background noise as I like. So if I have a lot of construction going on or I do live next to a hospital, so there's ambulance sirens going off, so I can go ahead and select high, or maybe I want to hear my attendees to hear music, I can select no or maybe let teams do the hard work for me and select auto. We also find on the right side our audio options. We can see that right now it's using my computer audio that I will toggle off to eliminate feedback, but perhaps you want to have teams call your phone and use your phone audio instead and have your computer show the video. We also have room audio for a device that maybe all members and colleagues are connected to via Bluetooth. May it be a Surface Hub or a smart board. We also have the do not use audio option. And this is if your Teams is inside the same conference room maybe, and you do not want to have that feedback so you can use that option. So I'm gonna join now and find that I have that once in the meeting, some navigation options accessible. Just like our meeting experience today, we do have our taskbar located at the top as I'm in the desktop version available for me to make use of. Now, as long as there are attendees here before me, it seems like my colleagues are here prompt, I will find their profile locations. Now, in the uh, first item here, the people icon will open up my participants pane. And this is extremely useful because next door, we find these ellipses. And these ellipses will allow me to manage my permissions. Now, which permissions am I managing? It's those same meeting options that I took advantage of prior to sending out my invite. So here, if I wanted to configure my, my lobby, maybe we're starting our meeting and this is just so large and people are coming from back-to-back -back meetings. So I want everyone to bypass the lobby. Caller specifically, maybe I want to have that announce when they join or leave, or maybe turn it off if that's distracting. Again, I can configure this to my liking here. So my meeting options look great, but also within this ellipsis, I can download my attendance list here as 
I am um, going to take advantage of that um, during our post meeting stage, but also the ability to lock the meeting, allowing no one else to join in. We also can invite someone if we'd like to. So if I wanted to invite Diego, it's as simple as typing in the first few letters of their name and I can request for him to join. Within this area, we also find who's in this meeting, but we can also select the ellipsis next to their name to pin their video. Now, perhaps Alex is the interpreter, so I need his video to be pinned for just me. Or maybe I want to spotlight his video for everyone. I can also make him an attendee or remove him. We also have our others invited that weren't able to join, so of course we can request for them to join here. Or maybe we forgot to invite someone. No fear, we have the copy meeting link option to copy and paste out to maybe your team's meeting chat. Pivoting to our chat area, it'll bring up that same meeting chat that I looked at uh, before joining. So as you know, meeting chats are persistent and chats altogether are persistent. So I can always go ahead and take advantage of it. So we can go ahead and acknowledge using those quick reactions. Very good. And uh, we can also send out an attachment that's relevant to this meeting here. You also see within your chat, this is where you can reference your uh, meeting notes. And of course, those attachments that I've attached during the pre-meeting stage. But let's look over to our reactions to just add engagement to our meeting. Feel free to utilize that right now as that may be enabled within your um, environment. We also have Diego using the most widely used feature, the raise hand feature. And this is by simply selecting and to lower your hand, you can go ahead and select it again. And this is really useful because it eliminates people from talking on top of one another. And you can locate within your people icon the order in which people have their hand raised. So really useful there. So we can go ahead and lower their hand by selecting the ellipsis. And if Deborah's finished, we can select lower hand. As I know that I oftentimes forget to lower my own hand during meetings after I've shared um, an item. Now we also have these overlapping squares and this is our breakout rooms. So I don't have to create my breakout rooms before this me meeting. I can always go ahead and do so while I'm in the meeting. So we can select from two to 50 being the highest, but we can also have teams automatically assign these individuals to their respective rooms or manually choose the people in which I want to put in each room. So we can go ahead and see that we have the assigned participants option, but we aren't going to go into this uh, much more as there's an entire session dedicated to breakout rooms. But I did want to just let you know that that's there for you as the organizer of the meeting. And because I'm using the desktop version of Teams, I have that at my disposal. Now we see this polls icon not by default, but because I've added that, remember, before the meeting started by using that plus ads icon. So here I'm ready to launch my icebreaker. I've done a lot of yapping here, so let's go ahead and launch this icebreaker. And if I wanted to submit a, uh, a choice here, I can go ahead and select great, and you'll see this polls will populate for all of my attendees um, in real time. And as long as they respond, it will showcase for you. And you see that we have two responses, feeling great today on this Friday morning. Awesome. Now that chat, excuse me, that polls area will live within the chat in the case that perhaps someone needed to leave early, they can always reference back to this chat history to see what they have missed. If you wanted to add apps, you can do so, selecting that plus apps icon like we saw before we joined. But within the ellipsis, of course, our hidden treasure, we can configure our device settings if we so wished, or examine our call health if we're noticing technical difficulties. But a second way to explore your meeting options this time opening up conveniently to the rightmost portion, not in its own window, where we can alter some options, just such as maybe disallowing our microphone and our attendees um, having access to their cameras as well. We can find our meeting notes, and this will bring you back to that meeting notes that you started. So it didn't uh, kick you out of the meeting because you'll see that it's highlighted and your profile icon exists. Now we also can find that we can take advantage of together mode or large gallery mode, because maybe the standard gallery is just a bit um, bland. Then you can, of course, take advantage of together mode, which will bring all of your attendees into a virtual space. You can also choose a scene. 
So if I wanted us to be in a different space together, maybe I want to take advantage of being underwater. And I can even choose to have this together mode apply for everyone. So I just want it for myself so I can have that view. It helps me to eliminate meeting fatigue, add some excitement to my day. And it, it looks like I changed it for everyone. So they can always change it on their end if they wanted to. Now my large gallery mode is grayed out since I don't have nine or more attendees with me in the meeting. So I do have this embedded within my engagement deck. So let's take advantage of this slide. As we see together mode, like we just saw on the left, it's inside an auditorium, but our large gallery view will show a seven by seven grid of all the attendees of the meeting. And this large gallery and together mode will just be applicable to you. You're not changing the view for everyone in the meeting, unless of course you've toggled that show for everyone option within your together mode. So we also have our option to turn on live options, just like we do in our meeting today, but also starting our recording. Now this recording will give you that familiar banner icon like we saw in our channel meeting, letting everyone know that we are here. Now let's look at what um, we have for Adele. Thank you to my Deborah, who's always affirming me, as well as my colleagues who are liking that column, excuse me, that uh, that praise. I'm thrown off here because I am feeling great today. Uh, we can also stop our recording as well, and we'll find that we could take advantage of that recording post meeting. But while we're in the meeting, let's go ahead and also locate our chat bubbles, something that I like to have on. By default, we see that as soon as my colleagues are chatting with me, I see it populate on my screen in real time for about two to three seconds. As long as you don't engage in it, it will just disappear. But maybe this meeting comprises of 50 or more members. So that chat bubble is just way too distracting. So I can always not show it and have it disabled. And of course, enable it if I wanted to. So we can also share out our audio or camera again if we do need to, but we can also have multiple sharing options. So including my computer sound will allow me to share out any audio coming from my device. So if you're the speaker and you're sharing out a video in order for your members to hear, you will need to have this toggled on. This is really small in my opinion. So you do want to just go ahead and have it on, but no worries. I forget to have this on all the time. So you can always go ahead and explore that share trade to turn it on if you so wish. You can share out your entire desktop. Now this will show a banner area at the topmost portion that you may not be able to see, uh, but this will show that you're presenting and you can also have the option to give control to someone else and also stop that presentation as well. You can share out your specific window if you would like to. You can choose the window that applies or take advantage of your whiteboard that you created, that you worked so hard on before the meeting even began. Now we can see that my um, colleagues have already created those topic items. And of course, remember, you can always zoom in and zoom out and take advantage of this infinite canvas here. But my favorite, share content, which is my PowerPoint Live. So if I wanted to share out this new product pricing PowerPoint, we can find that this is going to share out just what's outlined in red. So if I do have any speaker notes attached, my attendees will not be able to see this cost specific notes. Again, only seeing what's highlighted in red. I can navigate in sequence using those arrows, or maybe I wanna to pivot to my title slide or jump back, jump over to my, um, my concluding slide or slide four here. Now we can find that we have additional options such as maybe turning on grid view mode, or maybe I want to go ahead and turn on speaker coach. But the solicitors will also allow you to high presenter view or maybe view the slides in high contrast, a great accessibility feature, or even translating your slides. Now let's take advantage of these engagement tools. Perhaps I want my attendees to focus on a specific item on a slide. It will showcase that item for a few seconds or even directly annotate on this slide here by highlighting quarter one's growth. All right, so now I'm gonna stop sharing, but before I do so, we'll see this private view area. Now, if you do have that selected on, having that slash running through the eye, that means all of my attendees will not be able to um, choose a different side, but it looks like someone else has taken control. So that's totally fine. I can take back control here at the top. 
So thank you to my attendees who have showcased that as long as they're a presenter, they can take control of my screen, but I'm going to take back control there. So speaking of private view, remember, as long as you have a slash running through it, my participants will not be able to move through the presentation at their own speed, especially if they wanted to go back to a slide, then they can't do that. They'll only have to, to view the screen that I'm sharing currently. So I don't like that. I like to have my attendees go ahead and look forward or maybe reference back. So we'll go ahead and have that toggled off. So I'm ready to stop sharing. And I'm going to also find that I can share, of course, my files from my OneDrive or computer, but I'm ready to end the meeting for everyone. As I am the organizer, Ooh. I have that ability. So now my meeting is no longer highlighted, bringing me back to all of those tab lines that we took advantage of before the meeting, but we can also go ahead and explore them post meeting. So this is our final stage of the meeting, and I love to always bring us back to the chat. Because as we know, for any meeting that takes place in Teams, it will always have a chat that's generated on the back end, indicated by that calendar icon. So if I wanted to pin this chat because I do want to reference it back, and as you know, with pin chats, you can always rearrange it. So that's going to take um, priority there. And we also have within our chat area the ability to scroll through our chat history, especially if someone had to leave early or maybe couldn't make it. We, we also reference our recording here. And we can go ahead and open it up here, or we can reference back to our files, and this is where our recording will live. But also within our post meeting stage, we can access our meeting notes if we wanted to set up for next week's meeting. I love it. My colleagues are so helpful. We can also find our attendance, and this will formulate a attendance report for you to download. We find just the breakdown of who attended, but also when they joined, when they left, as well as their roles. And we'll also find this attendance report as long as it's uploaded within our chat area. It just takes a few minutes for that to upload, but you'll also find that within the chat area. All right, uh, within the post meeting stage, if you did want to also maybe create a poll for next time, you can do so. Again, this is a recurring meeting, so I do like to always have my meeting set up for success. Perhaps I want to go ahead and choose this suggestion, then I can save it as a draft and have it to reference for next time. All right, so we were able to go through the entire meeting lifecycle, the pre, during, and post meeting stages. So at this time, that does conclude all the content that I wanted to share with you today. Um, and it was a lot, so we don't want to um, we want to assure you that you can definitely um, ask any questions that you may have, but also remind us that this session has been recorded for you to reference back um, if you so wish. So I'm going to turn it over to my moderators to see if there are any questions that have been unanswered or maybe any redemonstration requests that we can showcase. Hi, Sarah. Amazing presentation so far at the moment. All questions in the Q&A have been answered. We've also provided um, resource links. I'd like to highlight that Chris has enabled cameras and microphones. So if anyone would like to raise their hand and come off mic, you can do so. But um, we do have the chat available as well for questions. Thank you so much, Alberto, as well as all my moderators and Chris for all your support. Um, I appreciate that we have that chat to reference if you needed to access those uh, resources again. But thank you for that. Um, I am going to go ahead and bring us to my best friend in Teams, which is in the bottom left corner of our left panel. We have our handy dandy help icon, and this is a great tool for us to explore topics, but it doesn't just stop there as we're able to maybe look into channel meetings. Then I can always go into seeing some articles relevant to my search. But even if you want to look at some videos, quick two, three minute videos, then you have that at your disposal. And of course, you can utilize that search function, but also what's new, highly recommended to keep up with maybe once a month to see the latest updates that Teams has come out with. Um, so if we don't have any um, questions, we can always go ahead and, um, of course, use that reactions icon to raise your hand if you would like to come off mute instead. But I do want to at this time, of course, my moderators feel free to interrupt me if there are any questions that we can address. But I want to showcase um, creating a channel meeting because if I were to create a channel meeting, let's do this really quickly here. 
as I didn't showcase that, I wanted to just create it in my demo channel. This is my demo. If I were to send this out, you'll find that this channel meeting is populates on my team's calendar, but that is not the case for all of those channel members because they would need to navigate to that team's area and go to that specific channel general, and they'll find that Adele has scheduled a meeting. So in order for my channel members to know that there's a channel meeting, they will need to locate to excuse me, the post area of that general channel. And if they want to add it to their calendar, they'll select the ellipsis, view meeting details, and choose to add to calendar. Now, I do have one of my lovely moderators um, create a, they've created a meeting for me. So I'm going to go ahead and reference back to my activity to see where that was. And it was here within my Mark 8 project team. So we'll see here that Alex has scheduled a channel meeting. Again, I'm not the organizer, Alex is. So note that I am not seeing that Friday, November 4th channel meeting here. So in order for that to populate, I'm going to go ahead and select the ellipsis, choose view meeting details, and choose to add it to my calendar. And now we can see that within my calendar area, we'll see that channel meeting has populated. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and check back in one last time before we do conclude our time together. So Alberta, were there any other items that we can address? Hi, Sarah. So it looks like someone asked out of curiosity where our recording saved. So if they are referring to this meeting, this presentation, Chris did provide an answer for that. Okay. But if you are referring to a meeting in Teams that you have recorded, um, that can be found in chat and files. So maybe you can show them that, Sarah. Of course. Thank you so much for that question. So yes, today's recording will be emailed to you. So thank you, Chris, for that resource in the chat. But all with Teams meetings all together, you can locate within your chat area the recording, but also within the files tab. Remember a shortcut of all the files that you can find within this meeting here. That's where you can find it. Now with your channel meetings, that will be stored on SharePoint and within your Teams meetings, those recordings will be shared, stored within your OneDrive. So um, I do have, Chris, I know that uh, you're here with us if you did want to share any other items um, at this time. Nope, I think we're good. All so right. I will end the meet, end the recording. If anybody has any questions, 